Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. All right. Today, we're going to focus back a little bit on the events in Israel and the Middle East and hopefully get some good, biblically discerned perspective on what is happening and what's fixing to happen. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful for, for Jesus. We're so thankful for salvation by grace through faith. Father, we're thankful for eternal security. And most of all, God, we're so thankful that you wrote it all down in a perfect book that we could know all about you and all that you've done for us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So an advantage that uh, we as Bible believers have over the rest of the world is uh, something called discernment. And that discernment comes from having something to measure all things against, uh, to make the cut, if you will. And the Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, that piercing even the dividing asunder of, uh, uh, of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. And as a discerner, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, you know, so, so the word of God makes that cut, that word of God gives us discernment, or it should, uh, I'm constantly amazed at some of the uh, YouTube hoax, wacko conspiracy theory nonsense that some Bible believers uh, uh, have got caught up in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> What we call y'all in, in, in prison, willy lump lump, one born every day. But, uh, amen. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're just talking about as you, as you look at world events, you look at what's happening around you, knowing the truth, knowing the word of God gives you a discernment, gives you a perspective. Uh, I, I, I really like what, uh, uh, what Paul says over in uh, Hebrews chapter five. Yeah, he wrote it. <laughs> he says, uh, verse 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by what reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See? That's, that's, that's reason of use. That's exercise. You know, discernment is a muscle. <laughs> Amen. Discernment is a muscle. And, uh, they talk about, you know, sh it should be that with age comes wisdom and uh, with experience come, comes wisdom. And that should be the case. It isn't always the case. The exception proves the rule always, but, uh, that, that should be the case. And, and as we exercise wisdom and as we become more familiar and internalize the word of God, it should give us more discernment. It should be easier to see, uh, what is true, what is false, uh, what, uh, what is a lie, what is, you should be able, you should be able to st really start gut checking this stuff when you really, you think like God. Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We have the word of God in us. You know, we, we should have the Holy Spirit's help in just discerning these things. And uh, so as you look at the world around you, look at the the, the, the war that's going on uh, over there right now, and you have uh, the fake news, the, the, the liberal media, uh, at, you know, all, all the talking points and, and their narrative and how they're trying to explain things. And as a Bible believer, um, you should have that discernment within you that's like, no, 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 it's, it, it's nonsense. So we have going on right now, Palestinians, okay, and, and their army is Hamas. You got, you've got the, the Palestinian Hamas at war with the nation of Israel, okay? And this thing's bigger than you think. Um, the, the, the liberal news media will come in and tell you that, that, uh, uh, this organization Hamas, this terrorist organization is this terrible, terrible group that's, uh, abusing these, 
wonderful Palestinian people, that it's just a bad government, and the Palestinian people would be just fine if they didn't have Hamas. And uh, man, that's 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 la la land, man. <laughs> Keep drinking the Kool Aid. You're cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Look, Hamas is the sons and brothers and fathers of the Palestinian people. <laughs> there's no there's no dividing line <laughs> between Palestinians and Hamas. Hey, Amen. <laughs> this 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 like it, it would be like it would be like uh, uh, you know in World War Two. Uh, when the, there was the, there was fighting over in Europe, and and, and 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 what did what did America do? We sent our armies over. Who was our army? Our sons, our brothers, our fathers. We sent them over to fight that conflict. So I mean, uh, hey, those that were the, the the women and the children, and that you know that they were still here in America. It's still one people, and that's the same thing in, in, that you have in the Middle East with with Palestinians and Hamas. Hamas is just the army of Palestine. Ha Hamas is the sons and brothers and fathers of the Palestinian people. And uh, don't think for a second that uh, uh, that that the Palestinian people, the Islamic Palestinian people, uh, are not one hundred percent in support of Hamas and everything they do, and and. and and wouldn't do anything for them. Uh, don't think of them as uh, uh, as just these 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 victims of Hamas. No, no, they are part of Hamas. They're the support of Hamas. The Hamas is their sons, brothers, and fathers. This is one people. This one nation. And in a in a bigger perspective, all of Islam is one people and one nation who follows one false god. And they all go by one book, the Quran. All right. This this is a we've already covered this in previous vid videos, but this satanic book with a devil who uh, appears as an angel of light to uh, a a fornicating, pedophile, murderous, illiterate Arab outside of Mecca who got a bunch of people to write a bunch of nonsense down, and he put it in a book. And, and that, that, that millions of people think is a holy book and they worship. But the whole game plan, the whole game plan of Islam is right here in the book. Uh, I mean, it, what, what's going on should not be a, a secret. It's not even a long book. I read it in about four hours. It, it, it should not even be a secret because they've given us the game, the game plan. I mean, it's like, it's like a, a, in a, with a football game. If the other team, went and got all the other teams played plays and their game plan, they could probably win. <laughs> well, hey, we have their game plan. And what is their game plan? It's Islam against the rest of the world. That's what this book says. This book says, and we've already made videos and, and shown you all of the surahs in here and exactly where they said it over and over and over and over again, uh, that you know anybody that will not bow down, submit to Islam, and pay them tribute and convert to Islam, they must be killed. That is the that is the bottom line message and method of Islam is anyone who will not convert, submit, and pay us tribute money must have their head cut off. That's the religion right there, point blank, done. So I mean, uh. When they when they come and they say, uh, "Oh no no, we're we believe in peace and we'll make a treaty with you and all that," you know, we've already covered that before. Also, that's in there too. It's called the doctrine of Hudna, the Alt and Al Takir, and basically what that says is, any Muslim is allowed to lie to any uh, non-Muslim and tell them any lie and do anything to them, rape pillage, murder, lie, whatever, chop their heads off, whatever, you're allowed to do that to any unbeliever if it spreads the work of Islam. That's Hudna. That's al takir That's part of it. So no matter what they say about, oh, no, 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 we don't support the terrorists. Oh, no, 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 we, we believe in the peace. Listen, they're one people. They're one army. The terrorist armies, the Islamic terrorist armies of the world, they're just the sons and the brothers and the fathers of the Islamic people of the world. They all have, they all got one one playbook. They're all on one team, and they're all one family. And you look at the Islamic nations over there. Yeah, sure, they're all arguing and fighting with each other. But isn't that what God told 
Hagar uh, was going to happen when she had Ishmael and he said, I will make of Ishmael a, a, a mighty nation, and, but his hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him, the, the violent people. And, and they're over there and, and the Arabs all fighting against each other. Well, let me, let me, <laughs> let me peep you to something. I'll give you a little uh, 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 old school Bible Baptist penitentiary wisdom. When you're in the penitentiary, you've got, you've got your racial groups in the penitentiary. When you're in prison, it's all, it's all divided up with races. Okay. And when race riots happen, when race wars kick off in prison, you learn something about human nature. Amen. So right now, say there's no race war going on. Now you've got the black gangs, the Crips and the Bloods, right? And they're fighting each other, man. And they're getting into beefs and they're stabbing each other. The Crips and Bloods, Crips and Bloods, Crips and Bloods. But, but let something go down between the, the whites and the blacks or between the, uh, the Mexicans and the blacks. And you watch those Crips and Bloods, boom, come together as one black people and go out and start stabbing white boys. Or Mexicans. <laughs> that's that's what happens, and that's the way it is. Uh, these 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 Arab nations act like they're they're fussing with each other. But listen, they are all the armies of Islam. They're just separate divisions. And hey, when the real shooting war starts, ding ding, <laughs> watch them come together as one people under one book with one game plan. Hey. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> now, now you now you know what's really going on. All right. Point blank. Period. All right. So we get to these the wars and stuff like that. All right. You notice I wore my I wore my USA shirt because uh let me say at the onset, I am a patriotic America. God bless America. Uh uh the red, white, and blue, Harley Davidson, mom, apple pie, all that, man. One Christian nation under God, hallelujah. I'm all for America. But the prospects for the future of America and America in prophecy, they don't look so good. Uh, that's my phone going off. Let me uh turn that off. Should have should have silenced that before I started the video, but uh, so the the prospects for America don't look that good. Um, let's let's go, if you will, to Ezekiel chapter thirty eight. We look, start looking at these end times. Prophecies, there's end times battles, the, the stuff that's going to go, the stuff that's going to go on during the tribulation and leading up to Armageddon and the second coming of the Lord. The stuff that's going to happen, happen right before and right after the rapture and, and, and all that. And, and so as we look at some of that and we look over here in Ezekiel chapter 38, and it, it's very, very famous, uh, uh, well, well known passage because it describes uh, this 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 great battle um, coming on uh, uh, at the, at the end, and he says, "The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy faith face against Gog, and the land of Magog, and the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God: Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws." And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia and Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Torgama of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Uh, be thou prepared to prepare. For thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Uh, after many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have uh, been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. And uh, 
It talks about, he said, they're going to say, I, I will go to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest and dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls. And uh, so these are, these, these, this, this is the composition of this army in the end times that's going to come against Israel. And uh, another another place that you can see that is uh, um, in Psalms 83. Another list of these nations, right? And you know what's interesting? Is uh, these two lists of these nations. One is in Ezekiel 38. And then you can remember the other was in Psalm 83. Like, 38, 83, they're like a mirror reflection of each other. Oh, a coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> Brother Bill Grady says uh, uh, a coincidence is just God's way of remaining anonymous. Amen. But you get over here in uh, uh, Psalms 83, and he talks to him. He said, uh, uh, verse 1, keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thou thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head, uh, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones, they have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more rem remembered, uh, for they have consulted together with, with one consent, they are confederate against thee. <laughs> this is all the United Nations, this is all the nations, right? And he talks and he talks about Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, Gibal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistines, Tyr, Asher, uh, the, and he goes, he goes on, and so that's Islamic nations, Islamic nations, coming against Israel. But over in uh, Ezekiel 38, there was some other nations mentioned, right? So let's, let's remind ourselves of that real quick, and then we'll go and identify them. This is, this is pretty cool right here, all right? So he said, now remember these names. Should have done this with a whiteboard, but remember these names, all right? Gog and Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all right, Gomer, Torgama, all right. Now, go to Genesis chapter 10. All right, Genesis chapter 10. Here we got the descendants of of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. As after Babel, where they're sent out, and they go to populate the world. And we see the descendants of Shem going to the east. We see the descendants of Ham going to the south. We see the descendants of Japheth going to the north. And so we know from, the, from Genesis 10 right here, and you can see it reflected in the races and the peoples that are that live in these different places uh, that going south, that the descendants of Ham uh, populated Africa. You can see that going to the east, uh, that the uh, descendants of Shem uh, populated Asia, and that Japheth, that his descendants went north, and they populated Europe. So you have the you 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 have the uh, you have black folks, you have Asian folks, and you had the white folks. <laughs> it's simple. It's pretty simple, right? But when he starts talking about these white folks, these descendants of Japheth that went north, look what he says here, man. <laughs> Chapter ten, verse one. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. And the sons of Japheth, Gomer, remember him from Ezekiel 38? I mean, yeah, 38. And Magog, remember him from Ezekiel chapter 38? Look, and Madai and Javan and what? Tubal and Meshach, remember them from Ezekiel chapter 38? And the sons of Gomer, or uh, Ashkenaz and Riftath and Togarma. Remember, remember him from over there in Ezekiel chapter 38? So here's what I'm saying. 
you get over there in Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, these, uh, uh, the, these, these descendants of Japheth, uh, these white folks <laughs> over there, if you will, these Caucasians, uh, these uh, Europeans and such uh, that, that are listed in this army that's coming down with all the Arab nations against Israel are not so much nations as they are people groups. They are people groups. You know, the, these, are, these are the white, the Caucasian people groups. And notice this. In, uh, in verse 5 there, Genesis uh, chapter 10, verse 5. And when he, he gets done listing these descendants of Japheth, these white people groups, <laughs> and he says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Uh, the isles, by them was the isles of the Gentiles. You know, when you go back in here and they list the descendants of Shem, and they list the descendants of Ham. They don't say anything about isles. That's islands, right? They didn't say uh, by 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 them were the islands of 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 Shem divided, or by them were the islands of Ham divided. No, no, because because Shem <laughs> they went and filled Asia, right? They didn't have to cross any water; <laughs> they could walk. <laughs> and the same thing with. With the descendants of Ham going up and filling up Africa, they could walk. They didn't have to cross any water. But but what? It, but but what? What do the descendants? Huh? The Isles of the Gentiles of the of Japheth. Well, we had to cross water. Amen. You had to get to England. You had to get to America. You had to get to Australia. Boy, ain't, ain't the word of God something? I mean, you ain't gonna beat this book. You ain't gonna beat this book. <laughs> hey, how did Moses know that? Uh, way back there in 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 Genesis, Amen. No, this is this is so. That's what's happening. Uh, we see it in Ezekiel thirty-eight. Man, we've got we've got the de we've got the descendants of Japheth, the white folks, the Caucasian peoples, linked right up with these armies of Islam and the, this 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 massive Islamic horde. And we link, link right up, right up with them in Ezekiel chapter thirty-eight, going down to attack Israel. Now go with me to the book of Joel, Joel chapter two. I'm sorry, Joel chapter three. Joel chapter three. How's this thing all play out? What's this? For behold. Verse 1, Joel chapter 3, Behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather, what? All nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Palestine huh? Will you render me a recompense? Amen. <laughs> all nations. When God says all, he means all. So when this goes down, and praise God, this is stuff that goes down in the tribulation before before the return of the Lord. But uh, you want to where where where's America in the Bible? It's right there, with all the rest of the nations going against Israel, and that's really not so far fetched when you look at the at the fake news, the liberal media, and the tone that's in this country right now. Just think about it. You know, God has two groups of people in the Bible that he calls his elect. The Old Testament it was a nation of Israel, the Jewish people, my elect, my elect in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, for the most part, unless he's talking back about the Jews in the Old Testament, that the, that's a, where you got to rightly divide well, when, when the elect is, is Israel and when the elect is the church of God. But in the New Testament, his elect is the church of God, is the body of Christ. So you've got two groups of people that the devil just hates. The devil 
hates what God loves. So you find you find the world, this present world, Satan is the, the, the God of this world, the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now works in all these children of disobedience. And so you see all the hate. You see uh, all all the venom, you see, all, 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 all the uh, violence and animosity in this world aimed towards, what, Christians, Bible believers, and the nation of Israel, right? So you know the source of anti-Semitism. You know the source is the same source of this world that hates this book, that hates the Lord Jesus Christ, that hates church, that hates righteousness, that 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 calls evil good and good evil, uh, the, a whole world that is just totally flipped, a nation, unfortunately, that has become almost a post-Christian nation, a nation that kicked the Bible and prayer out of school and in one generation has taken a nosedive so far down into wickedness and depravity and evil that it's staggering just in my lifetime. And I've often said that there's a good possibility that in my lifetime that I would see the decline and fall of the American empire because this nation has turned its back on God. And now look what you see on TV. In our cities, our streets of this nation, thousands and thousands of people protesting in favor of the armies of Islam. Protesting in favor of the armies of Islam over Israel, God's elect, and over our own country, the United States of America, who was founded as a Christian nation and still stands as a light and a beacon of Western civilization and Christendom. And you know why? Because we're here. Or should I say, we're still here. That's right. The only reason that America still stands with the nation of Israel is because we got a lot of Christians here. We got a lot of churches here. We still are having that effect, that salt. You're the salt of the world that preserves. You are the light of the world which exposes truth. So we are still the salt and light of this world. For the Christ Christians in America are still the salt and the light of this country. But guess what's fixing to happen? Oh, you know. Huh? That trumpet blows in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Bam, we're out of here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed hope, not a, not appointed to wrath. We hey, we got the judgment seat of Christ to go to. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb to go to. Uh, all that's going on up in heaven while the tribulation and, and and God's dealing with the Jews down here on earth and all this Ezekiel thirty eight stuff that we just talked about, Armageddon, second coming of the Lord, and when we come back with Him, Amen. So all that's going on. But who do you think America's gonna America's gonna stand with? Once we're out of here, once the Christians are gone, because I say to tell you right now, uh, they just did a poll last week of college students in America, and half of the college students in America support the Hamas terrorists over the nation of Israel. <laughs> that's 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 that lunatic left. Uh, that is calling good evil and evil good and is totally under the dominion as the children of disobedience is totally under do the dominion uh, of the satanic spirit of this age. And uh, they don't even know why they hate Israel. They don't even know why they hate God. They don't even know why they hate the Bible. They can't help it. That's, that's, that is the spirit that controls them. And uh, listen, when the Christians are out of here, they're all that's left. Because if you're a, a Christian, now, I know there are exceptions to this, and there are some just really, really 
confused saved people <laughs> that might be liberal or Democrat or, or left-leaning or support Palestine. I mean, there are the, the exception proves the rule. But for the most part, anybody who calls themselves a Christian and a Bible believer <laughs> is, uh, is for the nation of Israel, is for is is for for the right man the right that stands for traditional values and morality and, and, and good and, and is against abortion is against sodomy is against all 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 the horrible wicked things that 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 the left and and the Democrats stand for. So anybody with it is discerning and loves the Lord and loves the Bible, loves what God loves. And look, no political party is perfect. They're all a bunch of crooks. But I, I'm I, I, I I'm going to go with the ones that are at least taking a stand, uh, even though they're a bunch of crooks. <laughs> and if ain't fooling this old convict, believe me. Uh, but even though, but but they 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 want your vote, so they're taking the right stand. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give my vote to the ones that are uh, taking biblical stands. Amen? And uh, But listen, once all the Christians are gone, hey, it's like, it's like the parents are gone, and it's party time. Invite all your friends over, uh, fixing to throw down. And that's what's, that's what's fixing to happen. When, when the salt and the light, the body of Christ, are removed from this earth, uh, then... Then all the world will wonder after and worship the beast, the Antichrist. He's gonna come. He's gonna gather all them armies, and and U U.S. is gonna be uh uh because look who's left here, and they're gonna be right there with him with the Islamic nations. So we talk about that the the armies of Islam. Listen, they're just the armies of the Antichrist and the armies of the Gentiles. All all, all the England, America, all the all them folks. Look, it, it's the whole United Nations. It's all nations, like God said. It's all nations of the earth are going to come against Israel. Oh, but hallelujah. <laughs> hey, playbook. <laughs> hey, we got better than just the playbook. <laughs> we, got, we got the tape, man. We got the tape of how it ends. Amen. He says, uh, let's go uh, Joel chapter 3. Verse 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Boy, don't that one get taken out of context. <laughs> Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Now, this is good. Thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Yeah, we come, we come back with him uh, on, the, on white horses. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now we're talking about some Matthew chapter 24 stuff coming second advent, coming to the Lord, and the Lord shall roar out of Zion, hallelujah, and his name will be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he'll be on a white horse, and a sharp two-edged sword goes out of his mouth, amen, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, that the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel, in the last hour, the last hour, when all hope looks lost, and the whole world is gathered against Israel, Dun, 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 dun. Here he comes. <laughs> so shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. Amen. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim.
Amen. He gets down the end. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Amen. Amen. Can I say? And we all live happily ever after. But uh, So there's a little bit of discernment. See what's going on in the world, man. And see what's really going on. The armies of Islam are just in preparation. <laughs> the, the rest of the world's fixing to get right in with them as soon as we get out of here. Hey, that's all I got for you today. Hope it was a help. We'll see you next time. Jesus loves you, and so do I.